This video is for Hampton Roads local government employees involved in searching for dry weather pollution sources, an activity also known as Illicit Discharge Detection and Elimination, or IDDE. In this video, you will learn the basics of how to track down the source of an illicit discharge and ensure that it is properly eliminated. Anytime you come across what you suspect to be an illicit discharge, there are a number of steps you should take to document the scene. But first, if you encounter an emergency situation, call emergency personnel to the site immediately. Once you have made the proper contacts, take a picture of the discharge and the site. If possible, set your camera to show the date and time stamp on the photo. This can be important for enforcement purposes later on. Record the date, time, and specific location of where you found the discharge on an IDDE field form. Record any observations about the water, such as its color, turbidity, smell, and the presence of any suds, stains, sheens, or growth on the pipe. There are multiple ways to track down the source of an illicit discharge. If you can easily see the discharge on the street, in the curb and gutter, or on the landscape, you can try to track down the discharge visually by tracing it back on foot or in a car. This is called a drainage area investigation. A drainage area investigation works best if the flow has a distinct odor or color and can be located on the landscape. On the other hand, many illicit discharges are only detected at an outfall pipe, in a catch basin, or a ditch through routine screening or other storm drain inspection procedures. When the source of the discharge cannot be determined by a visual investigation, your next step will be to collect a sample of the water for some simple chemical analysis. To collect a water sample, first put on a pair of safety gloves. Use a clean bottle or sterile sample collection bag and label it with the date, time, location, and sample collector's initials. Place the bag directly under the flow to take a sample. Then seal the container well. In some situations, outfalls will be partially or fully submerged. In the coastal plain, storm drain structures are likely to contain tidally influenced water or groundwater. This means that it will be difficult to distinguish a potential illicit discharge from the surrounding water. In this situation, use a storm drain map to locate upstream manholes that may not be influenced by tides or groundwater. Visit these sites during low tide to check for flow. One way to do this is to drop a piece of leaf or debris into the water and see if it moves. If the water is flowing in a downstream or outgoing direction, collect the water sample from that location using a sample pole or stick. If water in the manhole is still or is moving up the system, do not collect a sample. If the entire system is influenced by tides or groundwater, you may want to try surveying outfalls from a boat or along the shoreline. Once you have collected the water sample, it can be analyzed for a variety of parameters to help determine if it is an illicit discharge and what type of discharge it may be. Many tests can be done using simple test kits and probes. If needed, samples can also be sent to a municipal or private lab for analysis. Typical testing parameters include ammonia, salinity, detergents or surfactants, chlorine, fluoride, potassium, pH, and temperature. These parameters can help distinguish between wastewater, drinking water, wash water, and groundwater sources. Flowcharts like this are available to help guide the investigator to distinguish various sources. For example, if surfactants, ammonia, and potassium are present in the discharge, this can indicate that it has wastewater, or sewage, in it. Also, the presence of fluoride can distinguish between plain groundwater and treated tap water. Other tests can also be performed to make an overall assessment of whether the sample contains an illicit discharge or not. The best way to track down the source of a discharge that you have detected is to work your way up the storm drain network. The goal is to continue moving up the pipe system until you can isolate the discharge between two manholes. 
Storm drain mapping information is extremely helpful for this process. In addition, as we noted before, outfalls can sometimes be partially or fully submerged, and the system may receive inputs from tidal waters. If you are tracking a discharge near tidal waters, be sure to check the tide schedule and time the tracking to coincide with a slack tide. In order to isolate the flow in the storm drain network, first inspect your storm drain map and identify the main trunk line. Moving up from the outfall, start opening and checking manholes along the trunk to see if flow is present in each of those manholes. If you reach a manhole where flow is not present, you can stop moving up the trunk because you now know that the discharge is coming from somewhere below that point, either in the trunk pipe itself or from one of the side branches. Now inspect the side branches that lead into the furthest upstream trunk manhole where flow is present. The concept is the same. Move up each side branch until you finally reach a manhole with no flow in it, or you see specifically where the discharge is coming from. Once you have narrowed down the discharge to a specific point in the pipe system, you can use a number of techniques to confirm the actual source. These include dye testing, smoke testing, and closed circuit TV, or CCTV, cameras. Dye testing is useful when the discharge has been isolated to a very small drainage area with fewer than 10 buildings, and the suspected discharge is a sewage connection to the stormwater system. At this point, dye is added to plumbing fixtures to see if and where the dye comes into storm sewers, confirming a cross connection. In order to conduct dye testing, you or your colleagues must get permission to access private property. Another technique is smoke testing. Smoke can be introduced into the storm drain system to confirm a discharge by observing where the smoke surfaces. This can be useful when there is a cross connection with sanitary sewer or damage to an underground storm drain. Smoke testing is most effective when the discharge is confined to the upper reaches of the storm drain network where there are small diameter pipes and multiple private property owners. It is crucial to inform local residents and agencies before starting the smoke testing so as not to cause alarm. Closed circuit television equipment, or CCTV, can be used to see live images of cracks, leaks, breaks, cross connections, and blockages within the storm drain system. A remote controlled camera is deployed into the system and video is transmitted to a monitor located inside a vehicle. CCTV is often used as a follow-up to smoke testing to find the specific location of the leak or cross-connection. Next, we will discuss the most important part of illicit discharge detection and elimination, actually eliminating the discharge. Key elements of success include a well-defined legal authority, strong enforcement, detailed documentation, and follow-up measures. Four questions to ask include, who is responsible? What methods should be used to fix the discharge? How long should it take? And how is removal or correction confirmed? Generally, if the illicit discharge is from an internal plumbing connection, the property owner is responsible for fixing the discharge. If the discharge is from a service lateral cross connection, the property owner is also responsible. But if there is an infrastructure failure within the sanitary sewer or MS4 storm drain network, the municipality or utility is responsible. Repair of internal plumbing connections can often be performed using standard plumbing supplies for a relatively low cost. Fixing pipes outside the building, such as service laterals or infrastructure in the right-of-way, tends to have significantly higher costs and may require certified contractors. How long should it take to eliminate an illicit discharge? This varies depending on the type and location of the discharge. Your local ordinance may spell out a specific time frame allowed for elimination and making repairs. Generally, if the illicit discharge is a significant health or environmental threat, it should be fixed immediately. After the property owner has been notified of the discharge by the local authority, it should be stopped within seven days and infrastructure repaired within 30 days. 
Finally, it is important to confirm that the illicit discharge has been eliminated permanently. This confirmation depends on the source of the discharge. Check the source visually, sample dry weather flow again at the outfall, or in the case of a cross connection, do another round of dye testing to ensure that fixtures or sewer laterals have been properly connected to the sanitary sewer. Occasionally, no matter how thorough the discharge investigation, a source cannot be found. For example, you may not be able to verify the source of an intermittent discharge if multiple attempts to observe the flow are unsuccessful. Be sure to document the investigations and refer to your MS4 permit for reporting requirements. Finding, tracking down, and eliminating illicit discharges can be a lengthy process that requires perseverance. Having and utilizing standard operating procedures and enforcement authority, good storm drain mapping, and the proper tools can make the job easier. Preventing and eliminating illicit discharges is mandated by the MS4 permit. It is also crucial to protecting local waterways. This video was produced by the Hampton Roads Planning District Commission, the Center for Watershed Protection, and Lori A. Lilly Environmental Solutions, with generous support from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. A related video addresses how field personnel can identify a variety of potential illicit discharges. Thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm.